guys, uh, welcome back. I'm going to do a video today of a custom build um, that I did um, with a, for basically it's an Aurora 90. Um, the frame that I got um, said Halo 90 on the box. Um, but I'm just going to go over what I did um, and, and then in detail a couple of the items that um, I ran into trouble with uh, that I didn't really understand uh, as this was my first uh, build. Um, a couple of things first. The, the build was actually very easy um, if you've never done a build. Um, once you learn some of the small nuances of, of hooking some of this stuff together, which um, I didn't know at first and took me a while to figure out. Uh, but once I figured it out that it all made sense, um, and I'll go over some of that in this video and stuff that I didn't really find readily available from other people's channels and stuff. Um, but anyway, so I'll start with uh, the parts. This is a uh, Pico BLX from uh, Banggood uh, flight controller. Um, I have a FR Sky 16 channel mini receiver here. Um, I got the I got a Cicada 4-in-1 6 amp um, uh, ESC running B -Hell ES. Um, it supports a uh, one uh, through two S LiPo. Um, the frame is the Halo 90. Um, I got the uh, 1104 KV7500 uh, motors from uh, Eashin. Um, I think these are the exact same ones that actually do come on the Aurora anyways. Um, but anyways, yeah, so I put a, a XT30 connector on it instead of a JST. Um, I just figured it, it would be a little more heavy duty and a little bit nicer. Um, I have a buzzer that I installed on it. Um, you can probably see some hot glue on there. Uh, I had to take, when I took it apart, I had to take the hot glue off. Um, but anyway, so I have that. And then here's the top part of the frame. Um, and I have a um, TX30 all-in-one camera on it, which works really well. Um, when you mount the camera, I don't know if you can see this, um, I put some double-sided foam tape around the, the, the um, barrel of the camera before I stuck it in because originally um, when I flew this the first time I was getting an extremely amount of uh, jello in the video uh, but I did that and then I tied I basically cut two rubber bands and then tied them around either side as tight as I could get them and I get zero jello now I mean it, it the the video is absolutely smooth with this um, but so that's the camera in the top part of the frame um, so I'll go. I'll walk. I'll walk through what I had to do for the build process here. So the very first thing I did was put um, the bottom silicon screws in here, and then I put a, a, a silicon nut on. So I don't know if you can see that there, but underneath the uh, ESC is a silicon nut, and that just raises the ESC up off the base a little bit. Um, and then I basically. Um, wired up the motors. So I basically installed the motors, all, all four screws in each motor. I know some people only run two screws, some people run three. Um, I just ran two. Um, and a word of warning on any of the metal screws on this entire quad, um, I would put a little, little drop of Loctite on those because um, I've flown about three or four times and then had a big crash and couldn't figure out why, just mid-air crash and I get the quad back in. Sure enough, you know, a screw in here fell out and I guess caused enough instability where a prop, you know, that, that it moved up a little and hit a prop or something and blew the prop. Um, so anyways, use the Loctite on all the screws. Um, that's what I'm, I, I have it taken apart right now, so that's why I'm doing this video and I'm going back and re make, making sure I have Loctite on everything. Um, so the, the, the next thing is once you have the motors wired up, so let me, let me explain something with the motors. So this is the, the, this is the back of my quad down here. So this is motor with, with beta flight. This is motor one, two, three, and four. Um, so what you're gonna notice is when you look at your ESC and you flip it over and look, underneath here you'll see on the bottom which motor this ESC, this is for, okay? It's not going to match up. So like if you look here, I don't know if you can see it in the video, that's, C, that's one, this is motor one and two, but if you flip that over, that's really motor three and four. And then over here, it's motor three and four, and that's really motor one and two. 
So you don't really have to worry about any of that. Just wire your motors to the closest, you know, ESC set of ESC. So there's there there will be three wires and then three um, pads that you want to solder to. Put a little drop of solder on it. Solder those on. But just just get your wires to the closest um, to the closest ESC that, that or pads that you can on the ESC. Um, and then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take the signal. This is the signal cable here for the ESC. So this is the back of the quad here. Um, so the signal cable comes out. And if you look super close, I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if it's focusing or not. Um, there's these little bitty numbers, S1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, so your, your orange wire here is going to go to your S4. So what that means is on your flight controller up here, when you wire your ESCs in, you know that S4, which is motor 4 right here, so this is really motor 4 to the ESC, but this is motor 1 to us. So all you want to do is take the, the signal cable for this motor, signal, signal cable 4, and make that go to ESC 1. And vice versa, and, and just follow that pattern all the way through. So, so like, let's take this this motor for instance. So, this motor is motor three to the ESC, but to us, this is motor two. So, then you're going to look on your flight controller, and you're going to find ESC two. So, that's going to go the purple wire. So, that's going to go right here to ESC two. This is ESC three and four. So, you're just going to wire it like that. Um, it's pretty straightforward once you once you understand that how to wire it. Um, I, that that was one of the things doing a build for the first time I did not understand. So um, once I figured that out, it may was a lot more obvious. I thought originally I was going to have to run wires over here from the motors to the the specific spots, but you don't have to do that. It's just just as long as you run the correct signal cable to the correct spot on the ESC. Um, and then I wired my. Uh, 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 FR Sky receiver in, so I'm running ESPA. So on this Pico BLX, there's these two, these tiny little pads right here that say S bus and PPM. Um, and you want to, you'll have to bridge two of the, there's three pads. You'll have to bridge two of those pads with a drop of solder to get S bus. And if you bridge the other two here, then you'll get PPM. Um, and then so you basically you just wire these in. And if you look underneath, it'll tell you. Uh, what, which one is your transmit um, in your ground? So yeah, this is a the, the yellow wire is RX, so that's your transmit, and then your uh, your positive in uh, ground. So basically, you just wire it in like that. So you know, if if this is the front of the quad, you're going to wire in um, yellow, red, and black, um, and then your buzzer. Uh, pads are right here, so you're going to wire your buzzer up here. Your your the buzzer positive and buzzer minus are right here, um, and then uh, your power. I, I forgot about the power. So so basically, this is your power cable. So you'll have to stack these. Uh, you'll have to stack these two uh, power cables. So one will go. The, basically, the power pads on the ESC will you'll you'll mount. Um, your power cables there, and then I run a short pigtail from there um, up to the flight controller, and and from underneath I basically push those through, and then and then put a drop of solder on top to hold those in, um, and that's really it. There's not a whole lot of soldering to get this thing working, um, and I'll tell you right now, this thing uh, I'm going to put some flight video. Um, I'm not a very good pilot, but. Uh, once once I got this thing set up and got you know everything working correctly and got it tuned up, um, I, I I'll show you. I'll, I'll also put in the video the PIDs that I'm using. Um, man, this thing flies the best of any little micro quad that I've had yet. I mean, it it flies like a real like five inch, you know, like a two twenty or or a two ten. Like I mean, it, it it's really that good. It doesn't obviously have nearly the amount of power. But the control and it, it's it, it's nice. I this is my favorite quad so far. Um, but anyway, so yeah, and then your camera is going to. I, I don't have it wired right now. I'm going to solder it back on in a minute. But um, your camera is going to wire right here to VTX positive and ground. 
Um, I've saw I've seen some people wire it to the five volts over here. My, I don't I don't really know if it matters or not, but I'm going to use the pads on the board that say it's for the VTX. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, it was pretty simple build. Took maybe a couple hours total, and that was with me having to search the internet to figure out how to do some stuff and not being really sure of what I was doing. Um, but anyways, I hope this was helpful. Um, I'll show some flight footage after this and I will show the beta flight setup that I uh, did to get this working. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the uh, beta flight setup that I did for this um, Pico BLX board um, with all the different uh, parts that I have on this. Um, so I am using a FR Sky 16 channel um, micro receiver. Um, so on UART 3, which is where um, I hook the receiver to, you're going to enable the serial RX. Um, then if you go here, um, the, uh, the Cicada 6 amp uh, Form 1 ESC that I got does not support uh, D-Shot. Um, so I got, um, I set it to multi-shot. Um, I set the minimum throttle to 1040. Uh, so basically when you go into uh, your motors tab, uh, take your props off, um, click on master. So, so you can do this. And then if you click on master, you start hitting the up arrow, um, until the props start spinning, um, until they're all spinning and none of them are jittering. Um, and then add about 10 to 15 more, maybe even 20, uh, depending on your light to that. And then that's what I always set the minimum throttle to, um, here. Um, uh, receiver set it to serial based uh, S bus. Uh, turn VBAT on because we we do have the um, the buzzer on, so we want the uh, the ba battery voltage to alert us. Um, I set these down just a tiny bit uh, because I noticed like on you know if you're giving it a lot of throttle uh, that there's going to be a little bit of battery sag and the, the beeper will start going off. So I just set these down a little bit. Um, I let these uh, 8 and 2, the defaults, um, and then nothing here. Uh, so after you're done doing that, save and reboot, um, and then go to fail safe. Um, I do have a, uh, let, me, let me go ahead and show you my modes real quick. Um, so I have on aux, aux 1, um, I have uh, my arm switch. On aux 2, I have my air mode angle and horizon. And then on aux three, I have my fail safe. So if I kick this switch to the middle, it's gonna it's gonna execute the fail safe. Um, and then if I click, uh, if I switch it all the way, uh, if I switch it all the way down, it's going to uh, turn my uh, loss uh, loss beeper on. Um, so let's go back to fail safe. So because I've enabled this, um, you can turn this fail safe kill switch on. And then it'll use these values, the, the throttle delay and stuff like that. And then um, on throttle here, I put this on hold. And so I, what, what this will do is this will pause. Like, so if you lose uh, connection with the quad, it'll keep going in its current direction for approximately, you know, 400 milliseconds. Um, and that give, hopefully that would give it time to reconnect and not just start dropping out of the air. Um, but I figured that, you know, I, I think I saw that on Joshua Barbell's channel. He suggested that, and that seems to be pretty good because I've had a couple of times where it's told me telemetry is lost and it's lost connection with the transmitter, and um, I guess it reconnects immediately because I, I can't really notice that, uh, that there's any change in my flight. Um, so let's go ahead and go to PIDs. Um, so here, here are the PIDs that I'm using. Um, and I don't know, the, the, I got these off of, um, I got these from somebody, I can't remember, but these, these were great. Like these are really, really, really good settings. Um, and, uh, the, it, 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 the quad flies really smooth, uh, real responsive. Um, I really am glad I found these. Uh, receiver tab, I'm using my Tyrannus. Uh, I have it, uh, the channel mapping on TAER1234, um, just double check that your uh, min and max um, are 1,000, 2,000, and that your midpoints are 1,500. Um, and you can go in there. I won't go over this again, but uh, you can go. 
I think in another video I went over how to adjust your um, um, uh, your endpoints and your midpoints uh, on on the Tyrannus so that in beta flight it all matches up. Um, and then I already went over modes. Um, and then the only other thing you really need to do is go to here, go here to motors um, and calibrate your ESCs. Uh, so if you've never done this before, basically um, you need a battery. Uh, click this, put this all the way up, and make sure you don't have props on. Um, go ahead and plug your battery in, and it'll give you a test tone. And then when when that when that set of tones is done playing. Uh, pull this down, just pull this down, and it'll calibrate the ESCs. Um, and that is it. That's all that I have here. Uh, I can show you real quick. Uh, I am running, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm running the latest uh, Pico BLX 3.1.6. Um, so I just put that on there the other day. Uh, but anyway, so the next thing I'll show is some uh, flight footage. Okay, thanks.